welcome back to the Film Geek. I'm Kyle Luters. We're glad to be back here in the studios at Cameron University. It's been a long but eventful summer. We had a lot of great movies come out this year. Kung Fu Panda was a good animated classic for the, for the family and the kids and everybody. The Incredible Hulk, I'm still not a fan of the big green guy on the big screen. But it was better than the last one. Get Smart had Anne Hathaway and Steve Carell in it. It was a decent remake of the 1960s spy TV series. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. What can I say? I went in with big expectations, and it pretty much was just Indiana Jones gets married, has a kid. Well, he doesn't even find out until halfway through the movie. And then he meets a bunch of aliens. I'm sorry, it's Indiana Jones meets Roswell. But finally, The Dark Knight redeemed the entire summer. It's now the number two box office movie of all time. Heath Ledger was excellent. Christian Bale was excellent. Everything was just cool about this movie, and it rightly deserves to be number two all time. It was an excellent summer. But this is the Film Geek, and we're not going to dwell on the movies of this summer anymore. Since it has been a while since we've had a show, let's take a look at the very special, one-of-a-kind Film Geek rating system. The best rating a movie can get is you should take a date, pay full price, and buy the popcorn and coke. After that, go to the matinee showing of the movie. After that, wait for it to come out on DVD. And finally, if the movie is horrible, if it's terrible, if it's just plain bad, wait for it to come out on TBS, they buy stuff like that. And that's enough about the ratings. Let's get to the movie of the week. In the past couple of weeks, there have been a trio of R-rated comedies. You have Will Ferrell and John C. Riley in Step Brothers, James Franco and Seth Rogen in the Judd Apto Pineapple Express. These movies are great, don't get me wrong, but this week's movie of the week is Landmines and TiVo's Ahead of the Rest. Tropic Thunder is this week's movie of the week, and rightfully so. Essentially, it's a movie about making a movie. Ben Stiller writes, produces, directs, and stars. Robert Downey Jr., Jack Black, and Tom Cruise round out the cast of this comedy of epic proportions. This summer. I want to make this movie right. We take those boys up there, put them in the trees. Shoot the whole thing gorilla style. Real fear in the right. Real in the Yes! Yes! The movie they think they're making. Exterior, rainforest, dust, cut to a frightening jungle. Isn't a movie anymore. I'm not an actress. So what? This feels pretty real! Yeah, exactly. Let's use it! Run. Uh -huh. Taking a speed, man. Some of us might not make it back. What do you mean? Like, not on the same flight? Who we'll sent you here? Oh. Hey, dude, you all right? Totally lean into that, bro. You want to do one more? Ah! I don't believe you people. What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? Huh? Big thunder. To go a lot of trying just to get up that hill. No, we up in the big league. That's the theme song for the Jefferson. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You out of your mind. What? You really need help. And just because the theme song don't make it not true. This movie was excellent. I've already seen it twice, and every time I see it, I just I'm more impressed with Robert Downey Jr.'s performance. In the movie, he plays an Australian actor who's playing an African American platoon sergeant. He's just hilarious in the role. Jack Black was good as always. Ben, Sp ben Stiller did excellent in this movie. He wrote, directed, produced, like I said earlier, he just did excellent. And finally, if they ever gave a cameo award at the Academy Awards, like Best Cameo, Tom Cruise above and beyond wins this award, I'm telling you. I'm not going to tell you what he did in the movie. You'll have to figure that out for yourself. But once you figure out who it is, he's just knockout hilarious. It's awesome. I'm telling you, take a date, pay full price, and buy the popcorn and Coke on Tropic Thunder. It's just hilarious. And that's it for our movie of the week. And now it's time for upcoming flicks. Three years ago, one of the most famous movie franchises in the world was given a tremendous reboot. The franchise had endured for over 20 movies and countless leading men. It had grown somewhat stagnant, and questions of the relevance of the character in a post-Cold War environment had been posed. However, with an exceptional beginning story, a strong-armed leading man, and of course, a lovely leading lady, the James Bond movie franchise was revived with Casino Royale. The film was a commercial and critical success. The sequel to that movie is set to come out in November. Its name, Quantum of Solace. You said you weren't motivated by revenge. I'm motivated by my duty. I think you're so blinded by inconsolable rage that you don't care who you hurt. When you can't tell your friends from your enemies, it's time to go. You don't have 
have to worry about me. Restrict Bond's movements. Put a stop on his passports. Find Bond. How long have I got? 30 seconds. That doesn't give us a lot of time. I simply cannot wait for this movie. Casino Royale quickly shot up my list of all-time favorite movies. Daniel Craig is just amazing. Out of all the Bond movies and all the men that have played Bond, Daniel Craig is second on my favorites list. No one will ever overtake Sean Connery. He was James Bond, but Daniel Craig makes a compelling case for it. As always, in this kind of movie, the action reigns supreme, and these type of movies do not disappoint. Casino Royale actually had two men, two actors on a crane 120 feet in the air acting out a fight scene. It's just truly amazing. And of course, who can, what's a Bond movie without the lovely leading ladies? Eva Green was in this movie, and she was just fantastic. She betrays Bond at the end, so she plays that very well. And of course, not exactly a lovely leading lady, but Judi Dench as M is just fantastic. She's like that tough-nosed kindergarten teacher that everyone had, and she's just hard-nosed on Bond. I'm definitely planning on taking a date, paying full price, and buying them popcorn and Coke. Enough said about Bond. Here's what's new on DVD for August 26th. We've got Chicago 10, Maid of Honor, and What Happens in Vegas. What Happens in Vegas is probably the best bet for this week. It has a decent plot line, but it has bona fide star power in Ashton Kutcher and Cameron Diaz. It's worthy of a rent, not a purchase. And that will do it for this premiere episode of The Film Geek. We want to give a big thank you to Jack Connor and everyone at Carmike Theaters for helping us out. I can't say enough about how friendly everyone is down at the Carmike and how good the picture looks, and the popcorn is just excellent, I'm telling you. Charlie Clark of the Lawton Constitution also deserves a thank you for help, his help in putting together the show. And I also want to personally thank the awesome, and I will say large crew, that showed up this week to help us out. Without them, we wouldn't have a show, and they make me look good on camera. On behalf of Dr. Matt Jenkins and the entire crew at CUTV, I'm the film geek Kyle Luters, and we'll see you at the box office.